What's going on everybody, it's Jay Coffee Talk back again with another video for you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Please hit the like and subscribe, the notification bell, all that good stuff. Um, if you guys have been keeping up on my channel, you might have seen that I recently did a couple videos about when they see us, this Netflix series about the Central Park Five. If you guys didn't see those videos, you can go back and check them out. They're not that far back on my channel, pretty recent. Make sure, you know, to get in the comments. As always, as your feedback is very important to me and, you know, this channel. If you can't find the videos or you just, like, want a direct link, let me know in the comments on this video. I'll share the links with you. But, um, you know, when we talk, like, as I said, I did a couple of videos. I, I talked about what they went through and everything and about this case a little bit. But today, what I, I want to talk about is the the true perpetrator, Matias Reyes. Now, when you hear the Central Park Five, it, <clears throat> the story is told normally, he's not spoke about that much. Just that he confessed, right? And, um, you know, he was had done quite a bit amount of time in prison. He was doing a 33 to life bid and he became a born again Christian. He had found God and he wanted to make things right. And he felt bad. Because he, you know, had bumped into Corey Wise a couple times over the years. And he felt bad what Corey was going through for something that he had done. So what I'm kind of trying to get at in this video is, is just kind of share with you through this information that this all comes down to just bad police work. Had the police really been investigating thoroughly, they, it was he was right under their nose the whole time, you know. But they just had their sights on these kids and they and they railroaded these kids and they and they weren't really doing real police work had they been this would have never happened so i'm gonna just get right into this to this information here now matias reyes was born in 71 he moved in puerto rico he came to the united states new york with his mother when he was about four years old so he had a rough time growing up um he later on they found out um, when he was working with psychologists and stuff that he endured some abuse of his own that he went through as a child, which is terrible. But still, you know, it's it doesn't make it OK for this dude to, to turn, you know, to do the terrible things that he did, you know. And on this channel, whenever I cover this kind of stuff, um, I always share with you guys that um, I'm a man of God and these sick perverts and, and rapists and molesters and things are just the lowest of the low they truly disgust me disgust me you know what i mean but um anyways he as a kid showed a lot of signs that he was troubled in in elementary school and everything growing up he was very violent to his peers like attacking other kids and, and everything like that and he also showed some kind of sociopathic tendencies like i'm no psychologist or expert or anything but um this guy is just a, a psychopath you know but um i guess he's not a true sociopath because he did somewhat have a conscience but when he was coming up and he was really violent he had the ability and this is something you hear about a lot of times with serial killers and other sick individuals that they're very some of them are very manipulative you know what i'm saying and um, he, he that's how this this guy was someone who would come on the scene that didn't really know him well. He had the ability to speak into them to make them feel like, ah, oh, this this guy is this kid's innocent. He's a good kid. You know, he was very, very manipulative. And it's how a lot of these psychopaths are, man. So, um, you know, other, a lot of people thought that he seemed normal. But he was not. He was violent and very troubled. So he ends up on his own at the age of 15. And um, by the time he's 17, he started uh, attacking. As I said, he was very violent growing up. By the time he's 17, he's attacking women. Now, he's, uh, and this is in 88, he started his early on, he like attacked a woman. And like I said, pay attention to this, guys. This was terrible police work. This guy constantly was able to slip through the cracks and, you know, not be caught by the police. Had they caught this guy, a lot of people, like, we're not even just talking about the Central Park Five. 
tons and tons, like many victims would have been saved. This guy had a lot of victims. So when he's 17, he attacked a woman and had her at knife point, and he was like attempting to rape her, and the woman was able to talk her, her way out of it, you know, talk him out of doing it. And, you know, he ran off, and he evaded the law on this one. The, the um, <clears throat> you know, the women made a report and everything, but they, they weren't able to catch him. So check, check this out. He ends up progressing. As I said, he starts out as a kid who's violent, ends up on his own at 15. At 17, he's, he's still violent and starting to attack and, and uh, women. And then he moves on to actually raping women. You know, as I said, many, many victims. Now, in, uh, that was in 88 when he first started attacking women. In, in 89, right before the Central Park uh, 5 situation happened, the attack on the jogger, he's already, you know, raped more than one woman. There was a woman um, that he did, like, he did attack and was raping her and was spotted in the park right and he when he was spotted he ran off no one caught him um the police didn't catch him you know the woman went and made a report and everything and and they didn't catch this guy now check this out listen to how as i said it's like infuriating when you think about what these innocent kids went through listen to this the woman this woman who you know he ran off when he was spotted attacked her in the park was raping her ran away she shared with the police right that this kid had stitches in his chin who who attacked her so um the detective who was investigating that ended up getting transferred to another division and um no one else ever followed up on that information about the stitches like are you kidding me the detective gets transferred no one goes over the notes nothing now <laughs> it's just it's just crazy to me and then the woman the victim, she moved away and didn't even follow up on it with, in court. So, you know, these st stitches could have, um, you know, been used to figure out and identify rapist and other rapes that he was committing. You know what I mean? Well, later on down the road, he, uh, you know, the Central Park Five happens and they start pinpointing uh, these kids in their investigation and just focused all on them. And as you know, they got some DNA from the crime scene, which they test, and it's none of the kids. So still, they don't think we should go find someone, go, go out and investigate more. They um, find, uh, they, they hide the DNA evidence in the trial. They didn't even want to present it because, you know, it would be a, a, a doubt of that these kids were guilty they were just worried about convicting these kids not the real attacker so while all that's going on he's still attacking women raping them and everything and he was known as the east side slasher a serial rapist and um later on down the road he gets caught after raping many women uh, there was a woman that he broke into her apartment and raped her and after uh, she ran out, like she was able to get away from him, ran down to her apartment building and like uh, a maintenance man and another tenant were there. And she told him what happened. And when he came out of his um, <clears throat> of her apartment, they apprehended him. Citizens arrest police came. They got him. Now, they have this guy in custody. And they press him about uh, other rapes and get him to talk and, and confess, right? And he ends up, you know, going to court with those tr charges, the, the rapes and the murder that they had him on, and he gets 33 to life. Now, he confessed to a lot of crimes. They never even pressed him about this jogger because they were pinning it on these kids. That's why, while this was all still pending, the kids were charged, but... You know, it, it's like they, they never connected the dots that this guy, a lot, a couple of his other victims were attacked in the park. Same MO and everything. The DNA was his DNA. Isn't that crazy? Like they never, they get him in custody and everything and they never um, put that together. 
Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's crazy. They're just like, oh, the DNA is in none of these kids. We got to hide this. Not, man, we got to figure out whose DNA this is. So it just goes to show you this guy all the way from growing up is violent. He, he progresses to attacking women and everything and then raping women and evades the law quite a few times and everything. And then they finally catch him. And they know he's the east side slasher who's been raping women. And they just never put it together that he was responsible for this attack on the jogger. Isn't that nuts? And then other crimes that happened in the park that night. That, you know, um, when these kids were there, there was like uh, some people, innocent people who were robbed and beaten and stuff like that. Those kids that did that were convicted of those crimes admitted and convicted and things like that and it wasn't none of these kids who ended up becoming the central park five so after all that they convict this guy and they just never put it together that he was probably the one responsible for these these rapes and that just disgusts me that they were so hell-bent on framing these young kids that the real guy who kept getting away with crimes, then eventually when they get he gets caught, they don't even press him about that case. And they had the DNA and everything. So it didn't come till many years later that he just felt bad and came forward and confessed. And, and, and that just blows my mind, you know? And he knew specific details that only the true attacker would know. And they still almost didn't, you know, clear these kids' names. They just started saying, oh, well, he was probably with them. You know what I mean? It's just, it just blows my mind that this, this guy was active in this area and attacked many, many women, and the police couldn't put that together. Isn't that terrible, you know? So that's just something that I wanted to go over in this video, as I said. You hear the Central Park Five story, and you hear that this guy confessed, but you don't hear really about how they had his DNA, how he was active in this area, attacking so many women, and they ended up catching him in the end, and they still, you know, they couldn't do the math. Isn't that terrible, you know? And it just it just makes me sick. So just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, isn't, isn't that a shame? Weren't these cops just some bums, man? And... The uh, lawsuit, the judgment, the $49 million judgment that the Central Park Five got didn't have come from police, didn't come from district uh, attorney, like anything to do with, with that. It came from taxpaying citizens, from what I understand, from the research that I've done. That's where the money came from, not from anything to do with the people who blew it when their job is to, you know, make it safe out there for people and lock up uh, criminals. And they didn't do their job right. You know, uh, to me, they should face some consequences for that. And this Linda Fairstein makes me sick too. She just, you know, refuses, refuses to admit what a terrible job they did, you know. And they, they coerce these kids, they abuse these kids, and... They starved them and everything and railroaded them into this, their confessions. And it's just nuts, man. But that's all I got, guys. Uh, get in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about this. Thanks for tuning in once again. Jay Coffee Talk. Please hit the like, the subscribe, the notification bell. Help the channel grow. I do a lot of other content, music, sports, news, current events, all kinds of stuff, guys. Till next time, I'm out of here. Peace.